Hello everyone, this is Anton, welcome to What The Math, and today we're talking about something called Kozai Mechanism. This is a type of a scientific mechanism that actually helped us discover why so many of the exoplanets out there have a very eccentric orbit, but most importantly, it actually helped us realize that there might be something called Planet 9 out there. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in 1961, there was a guy by the name of Mikhail Lidov. He was basically looking at various um, irregular satellites of Saturn and Jupiter, like these guys right here. And he discovered something. He discovered a pattern that was later on also discovered by a guy from Japan uh, whose name was Yoshihide Kozai. Both of them um, have actually reported this effect, and the effect was really, really simple. Well, I guess it's not so simple, because it involves a little bit of complex math, but if you have an object orbiting another object, here we're talking about the moon, and there are other more massive objects out there somewhere in the solar system that may affect these moons, if these moons have a relatively small inclination, they won't have really much eccentricity. However, if these objects have a very high uh, inclination to to the main orbit here, and I, th I guess it's easier to see if I enable orbits just to show you that this is a plane of orbit we're talking about, and the inclination here is around this much. So here's the inclination of this particular uh, moon, and it's also displayed in, in this window right here. You will then have higher eccentricity. And so eccentricity and inclination seem to have a very interesting predictable pattern. And this pattern was later described by both Kozai and Lidov and is now known as Kozai mechanism. Now just to demonstrate this, I'm going to start a new simulation here. I'm going to place Earth in the middle and to make this a little bit quicker, we're going to place um, Venus orbiting around Earth, or I guess they're going to be kind of orbiting around each other. And we're going to place a few random satellites around our planet Earth with different inclinations. And so here they are, we have four different satellites. One of them has an um, inclination of zero degrees. One of them has an inclination of 22.6. There's one with 67 and there's another one with 49. I'm going to run this simulation for a little bit. And what you may start noticing after a while is that um, the satellites with higher inclination are going to start increasing, uh, increase their eccentricity. They're basically going to become more eccentric. And interestingly, um, at some point, some of them will acquire a kind of a oscillation. And what I'm referring to is today known as lidov kozai oscillation, which basically um, occurs if the inclination of an object, and here I'm going to show it to you again, if the inclination of the object is over 39.2 degrees to the main sort of plane here. Now let's just wait a little bit and we'll see how the both inclination and um, eccentricity start changing. And while we're waiting for the eccentricity inclination to kind of get into a pattern of changing, let me just explain a little bit more about this particular effect. So the interesting thing about it is that it's, um, it, it's basically based on momentum and it's a momentum preservation where eccentricity and inclination actually become r related to each other and they become sort of dependent on each other. Um, it applies to pretty much everything from irregular satellites of Jupiter and Saturn to dwarf planets past Neptune to um, extrasolar objects like various um, planets around binary stars, for example. Uh, but more specifically, it actually applies to our own satellites uh, affected by the moon. So if this were the moon and these were the regular satellites that orbit around our planet and provide um, cell phone service or internet to us, they would actually be affected by this as well. So we actually have to understand this effect because their, um, the satellite orbits will eventually change with time because of this effect. And so here, the, the problems are actually pretty simple. So you have the primary body, you have something called a perturber, which is actually what Planet 9 used to be known as uh, before we kind of decided to start calling it Planet 9. And then you have these satellites that have very negligible mass that orbit relatively close to the object. And um, if they have a relatively uh, non-inclined orbit, they will sort of stay in the same orbit that will not change. Um, it might acquire a little bit of eccentricity because of the object's proximity, uh, or per perturbance proximity, but it will not really change um, dramatically. However, the objects with higher uh, inclination will eventually start changing both inclination and um, their eccentricity. 
Now I haven't run this long enough to actually have this effect occur yet, but I'm gonna show you, to, uh, you what happens after like a few years because I have a simulation that I've run for a few hours of real life and this is what it happens. And so here I have another four satellites with Venus in the background there and let's just take a look at them. So we have a satellite called Munus Pax, which is relatively low in terms of inclination and it does have a little bit of eccentricity, but it's not that much. Another one called Rita Skita, with relatively low eccentricity and inclination as well. And then we come to our next object, known as Veskiayet. Here are relatively high. It's, it's over 39.2, so it has acquired something called uh, ludov kozai oscillation, which basically is a pattern that will change with time. Now, if I were to basically, let's just say, look at eccentricity here as a graph, and if I were to basically plot this as a graph, um, with time you would see that its eccentricity goes up and down, up and down repetitively with a pattern that you can actually describe. And this is something that we've discovered about various exoplanets, but also about objects in our own solar system, including um, objects that, uh, like for example asteroids and comets that may be influenced by things like Jupiter or Neptune. Uh, so this is, uh, this is an oscillation that will become very, very repetitive over time. Here's another object here, we have um, the inclination of 58.0, I guess, and eccentricity of 0.33, but it will change over time. So, as eccentricity increases, inclination will decrease, and then we'll start doing the opposite. Inclination will increase and eccentricity will decrease. This pattern will basically um, repeat over and over over a certain period of time. Um, it may, may be years, it may be uh, months, it may even be days, but it will basically have this repetitive pattern. So here's eccentricity as it basically moves up and down in time. Now, this effect may actually cause, um, for example, a moon of a body to slowly approach a large gas giant. So like, for example, if this was a moon of a Jupiter and it was orbiting around Jupiter, it would uh, uh, eventually decreases or increases eccentricity to the point where it would may, uh, may actually approach the gas giant so close that the tidal effects of the gas giant might actually make it fall apart. And this would create a very, very beautiful ring around um, a certain object. And so as you can see here, now eccentricity is increasing as inclination is dropping. So this this is essentially uh, the lidov kozai uh, mechanism in action. And so yes, let, uh, let's just go back to this gas giant for a second, uh, this is Jupiter, and let's just say that uh, this particular object known as Lysithia um, has such a high eccentricity at some point that it basically approaches Jupiter really, really close. And so what happens to it if it approaches it really close is that it's actually going to fall apart into little pieces and it will actually create a ring. And so then Jupiter will acquire this very sort of a beautiful ring around it, although it would actually be a lot more eccentric and would probably not very uh, be very stable either. It actually might disappear with time, but it might also stay. So somewhere out there, there might be exoplanets that have these very eccentric, beautiful rings orbiting around them because the moon approached too close to the gas giant and then, and then obviously fell apart due to the tidal effects. But how does this relate to Planet 9? Well, because we know that there are these objects out here, such as, for example, Sedna, that have very eccentric, yet also highly inclined orbits, we think that something out there may have actually caused this. Uh, we actually are kind of 90% certain now that it's very likely that there's an actually an, an object somewhere out here, today we know it as a planet 9, but before it was known as a perturber, that uh, basically caused all of these objects to have sort of a repetitive eccentricity inclination with a, with a kind of a predictable relationship, because uh, Neptune is a little bit too far to do this, and there has to be something else here that sort of caused this relationship between uh, eccentricity and inclination for all of these objects. Interestingly though, um, only with time, only after like millions of years can we actually see the change of, you know, eccentricity and inclination as it sort of um, perturbs or oscillates around this, uh, or because of this Planet 9, but uh, for now we can kind of try to estimate where Planet 9 is located so we can actually see if it is out there and if we actually are correct with predicting these highly eccentric orbits and um, obviously highly inclined orbits as well. 
But going back to my original simulation of Kozai effect, uh, so here we have basically these two highly inclined um, objects that are changing their inclination eccentricity quite repeatedly actually, and their orbits are changing slightly. And um, it may even happen that uh, at some point this oscillation will actually disappear and something will happen and this one of these objects will actually get flung out into the outer system because their eccentricity is way too high but for now i think this is actually a repeated pattern that sort of is there and will probably stay there for many 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 years however these objects that don't have a very high inclination they have a little bit of eccentricity because of interaction with other objects but it's not as dramatic as you can see it's not as dramatic as when the inclination is over 39.2 degrees which is actually the so-called kozai critical value and so here, because of this, this oscillation has actually been achieved and will sort of create a, re a very re repetitive pattern between the eccentricity and inclination. And you can actually use very complex math to even find out uh, the period of this oscillation. In other words, how often does the eccentricity and inclination change values and how they depend on each other. But we're not going to talk about this just yet because it's a little bit too complex. But hopefully you got to visualize uh, and understand what Kozai effect is and how it actually relates to our solar system and other solar systems. And most importantly, how we actually uh, used it to discover Planet Nine and why we think that Planet Nine might be out there. Uh, also, this is a fact that's uh, sort of important for our own satellites that orbit around Earth. The ones that provide uh, cellular service to your cell phone, obviously. Uh, with time, our moon will actually perturb and disturb the satellites that have a very highly inclined orbit. And we need to obviously be able to calculate how their orbits will change with time. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something else from it. And now you know a little bit more about our universe and our solar system as well. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this with your friends and don't forget to like this as well. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else space related, math related or science related. Game you later and as always, bye bye.